subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so as you guys can tell sorry my hair's annoying as you guys can tell from the title of this video today i'm going to be talking a bit about my sixth form experience and give you guys a little bit of advice um so sixth form is a british school thing um so for people that aren't from the uk because i know a couple of you guys are watching from america um basically we finish secondary school at 16 and then we either go to college or sixth form for um two years for seven years year 11 and year 12 so the 17 and 18 um basically it's i guess it's kind of like the end of high school sort of thing like it gets our final qualifications before we can go off to university um but the end of secondary school we have to do these things called gcse's um where we sit exams and basically find out whether or not we can do these a levels that prepare us to go to university it's not too stressful um there's a levels and then there's btec so in a level you get graded um a b c d e blah blah um and then btec it goes past merit distinction um distinction star so i personally think btecs are easier than a levels but everyone has their own different experience um so i did four three three a levels and one btec only because um i dropped my fourth a level um because i Basically, I didn't get on with the tutor, I didn't like it, and it just wasn't for me, so I dropped it and I picked up a BTEC because it was like three weeks into the first year, so I was like, so I picked that up and that was like the easiest one I did. Um, I So that was BTEC business, then I did A-level English, Literature and Language. It was okay, I'll get more into that as we get further into the video. Um, then I did A-level History, have some funny stories to tell you about A-level History. Um, and then I did A level creative writing, which I did actually start in year 11 when I was 16. So I started my A level creative writing in at the end of secondary school. So I, only, I finished that in year 12. And um, that was something that we were chosen as individuals to do from a certain set in English. Um, so I picked that up. So I did half and half. Uh, glad I did that because obviously it added an extra qualification onto my certificate. But anyway, now that I've finished rambling on about the courses that I actually took, um, let's get into more detail about it and get straight into the video. Okay, so when it comes to teachers, I'm just going to firstly talk about my teaching experience. Um, I have to admit, at my sixth form, I didn't have that much of a great experience when it came to teachers. Um, we were kind of messed around quite a lot. We had teachers swapping in and out. Um, in English I ended up instead of having two I had three English teachers I had three English teachers instead of two so in year 12 I had two and then in year 13 one of them left and we had another one and um, the same kind of happened in history um, so in history we originally only had one history teacher then we had another history teacher that took us for our coursework um, aspect of the year level and then our other history teacher left um, so then someone who hadn't taught us had about two months basically recap everything before exam in history um which was kind of a bit of a mess um because he taught differently to how this old one did and everyone kind of um learns differently anyway um so that's kind of like something that affected me because i personally didn't like the way he taught um but other people enjoyed him more than the other one that we had it's really hard about including names um, and then creative writing I think was the only one I wasn't messed around in um, because obviously I started that in year 11 um, with an English teacher that was teaching that in year 11 and she was there in year 12. She was also my English teacher for English Lit and Lang um, but then she obviously left but I'd finished my creative writing A level by that point so that wasn't much of an issue. Business, we weren't messed around, um, we kept the same teachers the whole time. Um, so in year 12 we had two and in year 13 we had two. We had one of them for both years and then for the second year they swapped us to someone else with the coursework. Um, which didn't really make any difference really, it's coursework, you can get it done like, it's not like the actual teaching you're being messed around with. But anyway, I didn't have the best teacher experience at six form. my head of year was amazing. Um, person who worked in the office for her was amazing but teacher wise didn't really have the best experience to be honest and I'm not saying this because I hated the school that I went to I'm not saying this to bash the school that I went to but this is just my personal experience and I'm opening up to you guys about my personal experience and just telling you that I didn't really have the best experience when it came to teachers at six form and I think that made a big difference in my motivation to work and um, my mock results and then my um, 
overall A-level results. Um, I know they say it's the work that you put in you get out of it, but when you're constantly being messed around with teachers and you end up with teachers that don't really care about you, um, you kind of, you give up, like in a way, like I don't know how to do it, but you kind of give up, so yeah. Okay, so now we're going to move on to talk a little bit about the sixth form that I did actually attend. So my sixth form was at my old secondary school anyway. Um, so for a certain degree I wasn't really meeting new teachers um, but we did join on to two other secondary schools that are in my local area so we had a free school kind of um, sixth form sort of thing um, so basically I had English at my original school then I had business at one of the other schools, history at one of the other schools and creative writing was at my original school. Um, so our timetables changed both years obviously, um, which meant we had to kind of accommodate for travelling. They did put on a bus, but of course as, every, as soon as everyone turned 17, everyone was driving everywhere. Um, so I, in my second year, didn't really use the bus because I passed my driving test the second week of, second week of sixth form in year 13 which I was very happy with. I kind of wanted to do it in the summer so I could go back with driving, like sort of thing, but um, unfortunately I couldn't get a book, a test booked in in the summer because they were all taken, so the only option I had was the second week of September, which is crazy to think that this year I've been driving for two years, like it's gone so, so quick. Um, but anyway, because we were um, obviously in three schools, it meant meeting different people from other schools, um, and I made some of my best friends in sixth form, Lucy and Amy. <laughs> And they were in my history class. We always had such a laugh in history. Um, we would basically, I was the only one that drove out of all three of us at the time. Um, and we used to just turn up late with these drinks and be like, sorry, we were stuck in traffic. <laughs> now I know that's really bad, but as I said earlier, we kind of got to a point where we gave up. And um, before our old history teacher left, he didn't really care about us, to be honest. Well, he did, he was a lovely bloke but it just kind of wasn't a level standard sort of thing. Like he was amazing and he did some amazing stuff for us, like don't get me wrong. But yeah, so that I loved, I loved history for that exact reason. I didn't really like the whole traveling thing because um, it used to get really stressful. Like for example, once there was a crash on one of the main roads that joins all the schools and you're sitting there and you're like, oh, I should be here, I should be there, but you can't get there. Um, so that is really irritating when you can't physically get there. Um, lucky enough, one of the bigger crashes, I didn't actually go to school that day because I went to see Niall Horan down in Brighton. But that was another thing about my sixth form. They were really, really, really nice when it came to having days off. Like, if you were ill, you're ill, like weather, you can't help that. But I um, got Niall Horan tickets for my mum for Mother's Day, um, which meant at the time it was just kind of grab what was left. Um, yeah, it was kind of like a last, a very last minute decision to buy these tickets for my mum because she loves him. So we were like, oh, we'll go see him like down in Brighton sort of thing. Me not realising that it was on a Tuesday, <laughs> which meant I was at school. My mum obviously had to have time off work for it, but there, her school was fine with it. Like it wasn't an issue. She just had the afternoon off. But I had the whole day off school, so I had the morning to get ready and everything. Um, and I guess it's, it kind of gives you that idea of being adult like an adult like i don't know how to say it like your it's your freedom if you want to miss a day of school you miss a day of school you need to catch up sort of thing but then at the same time they were very 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 much treating us like we were still in school so even if you like missed your first lesson you'd let any mom go oh where were you blah, blah blah like in comparison to university if you don't turn up you don't turn up they really really don't care um, if you, as long as you pop an email to say that you're not going to be there, then it doesn't really bother them. But if you start just missing and missing and missing and missing at uni, then that's a completely different story. Whereas at sixth form, they were completely on your track the whole time. So we still had form in the morning, and if we were there in the afternoon, which was really, really irritating, because on some days we wouldn't have to actually be there till like 20 past nine, but we'd have to be there at 10 to nine to get signed in which is really 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 irritating now I think about that not that I actually went to form most of the time I just emailed in saying that I was here um but I got stuck in traffic on the way um moving on we're going to have a little chat about mock exams so obviously now that they've brought in a level there's no more as level anymore so you do have to do it all at the end of year 13 which is irritating unless your course still does as I think there's two I think there's geography and Geography and Law, I think they still do AS but that might change, it's been like a year since I've left there now, so um, 
But anyway, we had mocks in year 12, and these kind of give you the predicted grades of what you're going to get. So when I got mine at the end of summer in 2017, what? End, in, end of the summer 2017, I honestly wanted to drop out of sixth form. I was so devastated with myself. I was on the phone to my mum crying. I was like, I can't do this anymore. But I felt like I put so much hard work into it in year 12, despite the fact that I missed the first three weeks of school because I was ill. Um, and well not ill but ill but like i had an infection so i couldn't go to school anyway but anyway we're not going to go into that but i missed the first three weeks and i just felt so behind um so i ended up having to have a meeting with my head a year where she basically just said i'm fine um it's year 12 i can turn it around in year 13 like it doesn't matter they're not worried about me they know what happened at the beginning like for me settling in was a lot harder because obviously everyone else had had three weeks to settle in and i just kind of popped in halfway through the first Month of you, month of six month, about, well, not even halfway, more than halfway, like three quarters of the way into um, the first month of six form. Um, but mock exams really aren't that bad. Do not stress about your mock exams. Unless you seriously really badly fail and get used in all your subjects, honestly, they're not going to kick you out. They'll just give you a fresh start. You will work out what you need for help. So I ended up having extra lessons in all these subjects after school. Um, which kind of bucked my grades up a little bit when it came to in-class assessments but then as I said we ended up getting messed around anywhere with teachers so it kind of didn't help like the only subject I came out with a decent grade was business which I came out with a distinction and um, the others all came out as D's which kind of really did upset me however I still went to university um, because I got an unconditional offer for the current university I am at um, I am thinking of doing another video all about applying for university um, like around the end of September, beginning of October when the UCAS deadlines do open so keep your eyes out for that I won't really go into much detail about applying for university now um, but yeah, mocks aren't that stressful um, I think we had, some, we had some in January and we had the end of the year ones as well um, the ones in January were in year 13 just to kind of prepare us for... Um, our actual exams that were in May, June time um, but obviously in year 12 you only really have them at the end of the year and they're nothing to stress about they're just to see where you're at and what they can help you with like they'll make it out to be such a big deal but honestly it really really is <laughs> okay so now we're going to move on to some advice about sixth form um, I said in the beginning of this video that I would include some advice um, so the first thing I want to talk about is choosing your subjects now choosing your subjects isn't as formal formal as that sense formal as they make it out to be so basically if you decide that you don't like the subject you're doing in the first week you can change it's not an issue you just go to a whole year be like i don't like this but i want to do this instead they're fine with it they'll be like yeah that's fine normally you get at least 10 days to change over your subjects um when you're choosing your subject you also need to consider what career you want to go into um so my cousin's girlfriend is currently stuck between doing two career choices so she's asked me a little bit of advice on it even though she's literally just finished school and i'm like you shouldn't be stressing about your career right now um but it kind of obviously does have an impact when it comes to applying for university um but if say you wanted to do two subjects which were completely well not two two career lines which were two completely different careers um try and mingle up your a levels so normally you do get up to four choices so you can always so you can always mingle them about so you could choose two for the one that you decided that you wanted to do and then two for the other career and then you get to decide what you want to do as long as you have the main like subject for your um, university course so if you're going to do an English degree make sure you're doing English basically if you're like oh I don't know if I want to do English or I don't know if I want to do law then choose English, History and Law because History is one of the best subjects to have for any core based um, university courses such as English because um, these are very 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 interlinkable kind of courses and um, because you use all the skills from your history in your English as well um, so just read up on the course that you want to do at university um, have a look at it I'd say probably start you should have started this back in year 11 um, so that it doesn't affect your choices when it comes to sixth form but everyone changes their mind whenever they feel like it so <laughs> it's completely up to you but just some advice make sure you do your research on what you actually want to do before you choose your A-levels because if you choose your A-levels and then you're like oh it comes to applying to UCAS and you're like oh um, I don't actually have the A-levels that I need to get into this course then it might mean you have to reset the year or you have to look for something else so 
100% definitely have a look into that before you start applying for your A-level course. So the next thing is based on what do I need to take with me to sixth form. Um, to be honest, sixth form isn't any different to school um, apart from the fact you don't get books. So obviously in sixth form, in um, oh, sorry, in secondary school you get given notebooks with the subject on your teacher, blah blah blah. You have to supply all them at um, sixth form. I would personally recommend getting a laptop um, so that if you don't get all your notes down in class, then you can access the PowerPoint. You might have an online schooling system, we did, um, or they'd email about the PowerPoints, and then you can just add bits in, um, which for me personally, I didn't like, which got me into typing up all my notes, which is what I do at university now, um, along with obviously using my iPad. Um, but I would recommend definitely getting a laptop. If you don't already have a laptop, look into getting a laptop. Um, at least four, four or five notebooks, just so you have it covered, just in case you end up taking four, four A levels. And then if you end up taking three, you have two spare notebooks. Um, and then along with that, um, pens, pencils, rulers, depends what you're doing really. If you're doing art, then obviously pencils that are supposed to be that. Um, Colour and pencils, I would definitely recommend different colour pens because this really helps with revision. Um, I am also going to do another video on revision when it comes to exam time, so keep your eyes out for that as well. Just kind of promote my channel here, which is a good thing. Um, but yeah, just basically stick to all your normal school supplies, apart from obviously you need to buy notebooks and folders because the school doesn't supply for that for you, unfortunately. Until it comes to exam time, when you can go to them and ask for revision cards, folders, like they don't care, when it's exam time, just go to them and ask. Try and get all the free resources that you possibly can. Um, in sixth form, I never actually brought any of my own flashcards. I'd constantly go to them and be like, can I have some flashcards, please? Um, so definitely use that to your advantage when it comes to exam time. Um, but really, it's not really anything different to what you buy for school. Obviously, you're not buying school uniform anymore. Um, some sixth forms have a completely relaxed, um, relaxed dress code, but some sixth forms also have the dress code of business. Um, my sixth form personally was extremely relaxed, apart from when it came to ripped jeans. Now, they didn't like us wearing ripped jeans at all, which is very, very, very irritating, but everyone still did it anyway. So if you can get around your uh, dress code, then just try it, because they're not gonna, honestly. They would never ever send you home unless it was a skirt that was showing off like everything then they'd send you home and make you get changed but apart from that it's not really an issue um so yeah just prepare yourself like you would normally every year for school basically so keeping up with work um i feel like this is kind of a big thing but in a way it's not it all depends on you as a person being organized in sixth form is so important because even though you're only doing the subjects you want to do rather than doing the subjects that you're made to do in school um, it is a lot harder to keep up with work because you are getting a lot more because obviously you're only doing like three or four um, subjects um, but as long as you're organised and make sure that you cover everything you need to cover for a certain time um, if you have a booklet like we had booklets in history that had to be filled out by a certain time make sure that's completely filled out so anyway sorry as I was saying, make sure that everything's filled out for when it needs to fill out. If you've got a class test at a certain point, make sure you've revised for that. It is basically all about organisation. As long as you're organised, keeping up with a um, load of work is honestly not that hard at all. Um, so I, now that we're at the end of the video, I didn't actually cover something that was extremely important and I've only just realised. So in sixth form, our school did, I don't know if it's the same in every single school, but in year 13 we did a leavers, leavers ball, which was basically year 13 prom, as everyone would call it. Um, I'm going to include some photos, there might be a funny video of Amy and Lucy if I can find it and get the permission to use it. Um, but basically, it's not as stressful and not as full out as prom. But um, it's honestly one of the best nights of your lives. Like, there's nothing better than after all your exams are done and just before you get your exam results, going somewhere, getting drunk, partying with everyone. <laughs> this sounds really bad. Partying with all your friends from sixth form and just basically partying out the year and all that stress is finally off your shoulders. And I, I loved our Leavers Ball. Um, I was on the prom committee as we called it, but it was also the Leavers Ball Committee. Basically, everyone called it differently. So our teachers must call it the Leavers Ball, but everyone literally called it Year 13 Prom. Um, so there wasn't much for 
big difference between planning it. Apart from obviously it's not as fill out as prom was, so our outfits were not as expensive. We didn't get hair done, we didn't get makeup done, we all did that at our own rate in the hotel. Um, so it wasn't that much big of an issue, but I loved that night so, so much. And looking back at it now, it was such a good way to finally let go of my school years and get ready for university. So that's the end of the video. I really hope you guys did enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed listening about my sixth form experience and some of the advice I gave you. I hope that also really helps you guys. If you do have any more questions about sixth form or if you need advice on choosing A-levels, um, let me know in the comments down below or you can message me on my Instagram, which will be at the end of this video. Um, but apart from that, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time for anyone. Bye.